weekly visit with Michael Redman from the Artesia Historical Museum and Arts Center. And sorry about that, Michael. I didn't have my uh, notifier turned on. I didn't see the phone ringing. <laughs> so uh, uh, we have you with us today. And I've, we've been the last uh, few weeks, we've been talking about names of uh, places and uh, the historical background of why things or where they may have gotten their names and so forth. And didn't get a chance to chat with you before we went on the air. Wanted to see if that's what you wanted to continue on with today or if you had another topic for us today. Uh, we will continue with names today, and I think this will be the last week for that. Okay. And so this week, uh, continuing on with names, but I was interested in seeing how many places in New Mexico are named after, uh, are named after people or events associated with the Civil War. Okay which is uh, interesting to note that there there are places named... Uh, of course, there's places like uh, Lee County is named after Joseph C. Lee, who fought in the Civil War before he moved out this way. But places named after people associated with the war here, there actually are quite a few. Because uh, the Civil War did touch New Mexico a little bit, not obviously as extensively as it would have uh, on the East Coast, but uh, there, there, there was a bit of Civil War activity in New Mexico. I think you've talked about it uh, before. Uh, yes. And uh, there were um, three uh, major battles and a few smaller battles. And, of course, uh, and everybody knows about Valverde and Glorieta. Uh, the first major fight was actually uh, outside of Messia which, of course, is named after, the, the name is uh, Spanish, it means uh, a little mesa, because the town of Mesilla, right next to Las Cruces, is on a uh, slight height above the Rio Grande. And that was uh, immediately at the start of the, uh, the war. Uh, Colonel Baylor uh, invaded with a battalion of uh, mounted riflemen uh, coming north from uh, the town of Franklin, just outside of El Paso. And then after that, they fought briefly at San Augustine Pass, which is named after St. Augustine of Hippo, who was a, a saint uh, uh, in the, uh, the Catholic and the Orthodox Christian churches. But after that, there was a slight delay in fighting until February 1862, when they started fighting outside of Fort Craig at the town of uh, Valverde which Valverde is Spanish, and it's actually named after a person. Okay. Uh, Captain Don Antonio Valverde y Cosillo, who was the acting governor of New Mexico from 1717 to 1722. So there's a... Uh, and he was the acting governor during the, the Civil War period, or...? Oh, no, 1717. Seven, uh, that's right. That's Spanish right. Spanish colonial period. That's right, that's right. Okay. And then after that fighting, uh, the, uh, the, the Texans, because uh, the Confederate Army was just Texans led by a guy from Virginia, they marched north uh, through some towns. And then the next significant uh, bit of fighting was at Apache Canyon, just outside of uh, Santa Fe, which the name is one of those names where people from outside of New Mexico assigned, assigned the name because they thought it was a place where Apache people would uh, ambush um, the Spanish at that particular spot in the uh, Glorieta Pass, which uh, afterwards they actually asked some people from uh, some of the uh, people from the Pecos Pueblo, and they said, no, no, Comanche people have uh, done that at that spot a couple times, but never Apache people, so thus but, is the history of the West. But, but still the name had, uh, had stuck. The name it stuck, and it's still uh, that that spot is still known as Apache Canyon. Hmm. And then uh, another interesting bit of, uh, of Western and uh, New Mexico history is that the next battle at Glorieta. Glorieta has two different definitions. Uh, these the Spanish, uh, the Castilian Spain Spanish says that Glorieta means uh, bower or arbor. But the Mexican Spanish, which is the more appropriate one here, 
that the name Glorieta is used uh, in Mexico to indicate a crossroad or town square that's surrounded by trees. Okay. Which, if you drive through the Glorieta area, that makes sense. There's trees. A lot of trees, and there's crossroads, sort of. That's where the uh, Santa Fe, uh, that's where the Santa Fe Trail passed through. Various uh, stage stops and uh, a couple different paths leading from the trail to uh, other towns. So that name sort of makes sense. Well, and in the early days of travel, uh, finding easier to navigate paths through mountain ranges was was pretty important. It was, and what's interesting too is that uh, at that spot on Santa Fe Trail was the uh, Pueblo of Pecos. So they there was an established town, and then they built uh, the town of Pecos nearby because the Pueblo had uh, people uh, had started leaving that Pueblo for other Pueblos mm-hmm. during the Spanish colonial period. So it was a crossroad of uh, two of multiple different communities uh, meeting up. And so after that fight, uh, the, the Texans uh, marched back the same path they went and stopped at uh, Peralta outside of Albuquerque. Okay. And there was a brief fight there, but the commander of the, uh, of the U.S. Army did not want to uh, have any significant fighting because he did not want to take prisoners of war. He, would re- he preferred that the Texans just left entirely. Because otherwise he'd have to feed the prisoners, he'd have to find a place to keep them until prisoner exchanges, and that would just mess up his uh, logistical planning. So he uh, basically let them escape. But Peralta is named after Andre and Manuel de Peralta, who were two uh, Spanish uh, settlers who moved into the area after the Pueblo Revolt. So they came with uh, de Vargas, and they uh, settled uh, in the Albuquerque area. Okay. But then when I started looking at names of places to see if there's any connection between uh, the fighting and the area, there's actually, there were four forts in New Mexico named after after officers who died uh, during the Civil War. And I'm going to guess uh, Union, Union or uh, soldiers, not Confederate soldiers. Well, they were, uh, all of them were in the U.S. Army before the, well, for, uh, actually, yeah, all five of them were in the U.S. Army before the war. Okay. So, of course, uh, three of them died at Valverde. Captain George N. Bascom of the 16th uh, Infantry, he died at Valverde. So they set up a fort near Tucumcari, named after him, Fort uh, Bascom. That fort was only open for a short while uh, during the uh, during the war and shortly afterwards uh, during the fighting with the Comanche people. Then there's uh, Fort uh, Cummings, named after Joseph uh, Major Joseph Cummings. He uh, left the regular army to serve in the First New Mexico uh, uh, Cavalry, a volunteer unit formed during the war. He uh, accompanied Kit Carson during his campaign against the Navajo people and died fighting uh, on the uh, Navajo Nation. So they named a fort after him down in uh, Luna County. Actually, Luna County is, uh, it would be over in Luna, Luna County. Mm-hmm. That fort existed shortly during the war and shortly after the war. Then they shut it down because it was no longer needed. Mm-hmm. A third one was uh, was Fort McRae, named after Alexander McRae of the 3rd Cavalry. He died at Valverde. Captain McRae, he was uh, quite famous during the battle because uh, during the Battle of Valverde, he um, took command of the uh, artillery during the battle, and, and uh, because of his leadership and his specific actions at the battery, they managed to keep the uh, the Confederates from uh, from completely uh, overrunning the uh, the uh, U.S. Army, and so he kept the battle from transforming from a defeat to a complete disaster. Okay. And he died at the guns. 
and what's fascinating is that he's from, uh, I believe he's from North Carolina. Oh, and but he was Which, uh, still on the Union side, I guess, or the U.S. side. Yes, he uh, his uh, oath of allegiance uh, to him was more important than uh, the state that he was born in. Which can't be said for some of the other officers out in this area. Right. Because uh, the fourth uh, fort, named after someone who died out here, was originally named Fort Fauntleroy. But Fauntleroy, I believe he was a major, he left the Army in 1862 and went south. So they renamed that fort after Benjamin Wingate, a captain of the 5th uh, Infantry, who died at the Battle of Alberta as well. They lost a lot of officers at Val Verde. Yeah. And that one is out by Gallup, and I believe Fort Wingate is still operating. Or it's a, it's a reserve fort now. Or it's still there. Mm -hmm. Unlike all these others, because like Fort McRae, that uh, was abandoned long ago, and now uh, that's out by uh, Truth of Consequences at the uh, Elephant uh, Butte uh, Reservoir. Okay. There's a fifth one that uh, was, wasn't was technically named after someone who died in the war because he died in December 1860, but Fort McLean um, out in Grants County was named after George McLean, of the captain of the Regiment of Mounted Riflemen, who died uh, in that uh, very brief uh, fight war of the Navajo people in 1860. But that was originally named after John B. Floyd, the Secretary of War, under President Buchanan, who also went south uh, during the war. So they got that name changed and uh, renamed it to McLean. And that name change was really quick because uh, John B. Floyd, uh, they found out uh, when Lincoln's uh, administration started, they discovered that uh, as the Secretary of War, Floyd had sent a lot of uh, cannons and rifles and and, uh, and rifle manufacturing machinery down south during the secession era. So the, uh, the U.S. Army arsenals had been emptied out in favor <laughs> of uh, southern arsenals. He was uh, anticipating what may happen and taking advantage of his position in order to do that. Now, now, are any of these forts, are they, or former forts, uh, are they historic sites? Are they marked with historic markers right now? Or have they pretty well uh, disappeared back into the environment? Well, Bascom has disappeared. Uh, McRae has disappeared. Oh, I forgot Fort Selden, too. Okay. That's still around. That's actually a, a state historic site named after Henry R. Selden, who was a captain of the 5th U.S. Infantry took over the first uh, New Mexico uh, volunteer infantry as a colonel. He died of disease during the war in 1865, right before the war ended. Mm -hmm. So they named Fort Selden after him. But otherwise, the only the only other one that's uh, Fort Wingate still around, but Fort Cummings is uh, that's that that's ruins. It's uh, on on Bureau of Land Management uh, land. But you have to travel through private land to get to it, so people rarely go to see it. Right. And then Fort McLean, what happened uh, to that fort? Fort McLean, um, that I believe is gone. That's fully. gone. Okay. So Bascom's gone, McRae's gone, Cummings is ruins on private, well, hard to get to. Um, Wingate, as you said, is still being utilized to some degree in uh, Gallup and Selden, you said, was still uh, uh, a, a site. Yeah. I mean, it's still there. Yes. Okay. And there's uh, places other than forts named after people who fought in the war here as well. Like there's uh, Shoemaker over in Mora County. That's no longer around. That used to be a town named after Captain W.R. Shoemaker, who was uh, in charge of logistics at Fort Union during the war. Uh, there's also uh, a couple uh, mountains named after people who were involved in the war here, like Simpson Peak over in Taos County, 
named after Smith H. Simpson, who was a captain of the Spies and Scouts uh, during the uh, Navajo campaign under Kit Carson. Okay. And interestingly enough, kind of odd, there's actually two places here named after uh, Confederates. Okay. Sibley Mountain. Sibley? Named after, yes. That was along the path of where the Texans had retreated after Glorietta, and that was named after their commander, Henry H. Sibley. It's odd to commemorate a mountain after him because he was uh, known for being a kind of a drunk, <laughs> and his incompetence led to the uh, defeats. But there's also a Baylor Canyon, a Baylor Pass, and a Baylor Peak down by Las Cruces. Okay. And that's named after John Robert Baylor, who was the uh, initial commander of the Texans who invaded in 1861, who defeated the, uh, the U.S. Army at uh, the San Augustine Pass. And Baylor Pass is where his army marched around and ambushed the uh, U.S. Army. Huh. So he, he must have had some, uh, some recognition for other things, why they would still have a canyon pass and peak named after him even after all these years. Well, I, I can only think it's because of that particular battle, because he, was, uh, he became the governor of Confederate Arizona and New Mexico. Mm -hmm. But the, he came up with the plan of just killing all the Apache people in the area, which was so shocking even to the Confederates that the Confederate government that they removed him from his governor position and sent him back to Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Of all the renamings that's been going on, I'm I'm surprised that hasn't uh, come up to be uh, to be reconsidered, if you will. Uh, well, probably because they think of Baylor University. That's right. I think is his brother or his cousin or something like that. Gotcha. Got about 30 seconds left. Uh, anything else coming up at the museum you'd like to mention? Well, we, we're getting our trees trimmed today, but they're going to, uh, so just watch out for following tree branches. Uh, they're going to spare the uh, as many branches as possible so we get as many pecans as possible. If you like to come and pick pecans at the museum, I'm trying to make sure that uh, there will be as many still around as possible. 